It's Friday, March the 21st, 2014. I'm Mark Chastley, and this is episode number 26 of TEN, Transport Evolved News for the week beginning March 17th, 2014. Nikki is away testing the e-golf, I'm very jealous, so I'm here holding the fort at Evolved Towers. On with the show. In business, you hear a lot of terms like implementing convergence plans and achieving annual synergy, and quite frankly, they make my mind spin. But this week, an announcement from the Renault-Nissan Alliance used just those phrases and more to let us know that they plan to work even closer together in future. In order to achieve a minimum 4.3 billion euro annual synergy goal, the two companies have agreed to implement convergence plans in four key areas. Engineering, manufacturing and supply chain management, purchasing and human resources. It's the engineering one that piqued our interest, as it includes the advanced research and electrical powertrain development. With Renault and Nissan having between them five different production electric vehicles on the market and others on the way, we hope this convergence will allow them to learn from each other and those vehicle strengths to push electric cars and vehicles forward. Now, pop quiz, can you name all five available EVs from the two manufacturers? Come on, tick tock. Okay, pencils down. It's the Leaf, the Zoe, the Twizy, the Kangoo ZE, and the ENV200. The Renault Fluence, of course, haven't been pulled from production. In a slightly sneaky move, BMW has stated on their i3 microsite that the i3 range extended model has a range per charge of between 160 and 180 miles. This could be taken by those not in a know as indicating that the i3 Rex has a larger battery pack than its all-electric sibling. In reality, however, this isn't true. The BMW i3 Wax and i3 are identically specced in terms of battery pack and electric motor and charging circuit. What is true is that in the i3 Rex, the engine in the car will switch on or be switched on by the user in some countries to recharge the battery while the car is in motion. In the best case, we are hoping that the minds of those that put this site together, that they see the petrol range extended as just enabling further all electric range. The flip side of this, the worst case, is that BMW is just being plain deceitful. But I'm sure this isn't really the case, and it will be corrected shortly. Maybe what we need here is an established format for range extended electric cars, a stated all electric range and a stated total combined range maybe. We've talked before about the much coveted HOV lane access stickers in California. There are two types, a white sticker that's unlimited and available to cars that are 100% zero emission, and a limited edition green sticker that has a wider remit allowing plug-in hybrids and the like. There are only 40,000 of these green stickers to be claimed, and at the last count, more than 36,230 had been claimed already. Basically, they're almost all gone. With less than 10% of the green stickers left, the California Department of Motor Vehicles has suspended a program designed to make it possible for auto dealers to preemptively apply for green HOV lane access stickers ahead of the vehicle sale. In many ways, it was a win-win situation. Customers would buy a car with a sticker pre-applied, avoiding the hassle of what we assume is very tedious paperwork. And in turn, the auto dealers could profit from having pre-registered cars ready to drive away on their lot. But no more. It seems that the days of the green sticker are numbered. So if you want one, best to fly soon. More and more electric cars are popping up in TV shows and films. The latest electric car to have this honour bestowed upon it is Renault's go-kart-like and brilliant fun to drive Twizy. Terry Gilliam's latest film, The Zero Theorem, will have people in the background zooming around in the Twizzes. Because, let's face it, they do look a tad futuristic. The film's producer, Patrick Newell, said, We're using the Twizy as the predominant picture vehicle in the movie. It's the car that you'll see driving in the streets in all of the scenes. It's the car that in all of the exterior shots will be on the street. However, it isn't the only electric star of the movie. The eagle-eyed viewers may be able to spot the odd GEM neighbourhood electric vehicle too. The Zero Theorem is in theatres in the UK right now and will open across mainland Europe throughout spring and summer. US viewers will have to wait until the summer though. Sorry. The last mile problem in transportation is a problem that all manufacturers want to solve. Basically, people are crying out for fast, reliable and green transportation from a central transportation hub, such as a train or bus station, to their final destination. It's an untapped and potentially very lucrative market. One such contender for a solution is the Toyota's electric iRoad, a three-wheeled, leaning, tandem vehicle designed for quick and easy transportation within a city. This week it was announced that 30 Toyota iRoads will be making their way to the city of Grenoble, France, to be used by residents and visitors as part of a new trial. This adds to an existing trial in Japan where the iRoad is being used as a car share scheme in Toyota City, Achi. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Sorry. Operating in a similar way to bike share schemes across the world, the iRoad is available to anyone who needs one to conquer the last mile of their journey. The iRoad is powered by two 2 kilowatt motors mounted on the front wheels. It is claimed that these are able to provide brisk acceleration and near-silent running. I'd like to give one a go to see if that's the case. 
The iGrade has a top speed of 28 miles per hour, that's about 45 kilometers per hour, and has a stated range of about 30 miles. The coolest thing about this car, it has active lean technology. The vehicle actually lean into corners, adjusting the vertical position of the front wheels to give a more motorbike feel to the handling of the three-wheeled vehicle. Just awesome. Chadamo, the Japanese rapid charging standard that is in use on the Nissan, Mitsubishi, Peugeot and Kia cars, to name but a few, has this week become the official international standard for rapid charging. First introduced in 2009 with the Japanese market Mitsubishi iMu, the Chadamo standard is capable of recharging the battery packs of cars like the Nissan Leaf and Kia Soul EV from 80 to 80% 80 in as little as 30 minutes. Used on everything from electric motorcycles to full-size electric buses, Chadamo is also the world's most commonly used DC quick charge standard. With what we estimate to be more than 100,000 Chadamo equipped vehicles on the road. Technically it was officially accepted in January but has only just appeared on the International Electrotechnical Commission's website this week. However, this isn't the end of the rapid charge wars. Yeah, I just made that up, but it sounds cool and I'm going to go with it. This isn't the end of the rapid charge wars. The EU still plans to phase out Chadamo stations by the end of 2018 and replace them with a combined charging station CCS charger. Of course, Tesla is going their own way with their own standard. And then there's Renault with their Zoe. They don't use DC rapid charging, instead preferring to use rapid AC charging at 43 kilowatts. However, this week Transport Evolve learned from an anonymous source that Renault may be stopping its policy on subsidising the purchase and installation of these charging stations, relying on charging providers to support its car without financial incentives. In order to encourage adoption rates of cars, Renault, along with its alliance partner Nissan, has partly funded the installation of European-wide dual-head charging networks with 43 kilowatt AC connector and a 50 kilowatt DC Chadamo connector fitted. We reached out to Renault for official comment on the story and were told that the automaker was not able to confirm the rumour. Instead, we were told charging station installations were being examined on a case-by-case -case basis. Of course, due to the Chameleon Charger and the Zoe, the car can still charge at other fast rates, including 22 kilowatts, which is much more prevalent in Europe. This will give the car a full charge in about an hour and 20 minutes. Still, it's a bit of a bummer. This week, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie publicly tried to set the record straight about recent vote made by the New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission to ban Tesla from selling direct to customers in the Garden State. Christie claims Tesla ignored all of New Jersey's warnings and that it was operating outside of the law, continuing to operate in the state as if nothing was wrong. Which, personally, I find very interesting. If that were the case, surely new regulation wouldn't have been needed. But then US politics is always a bit a little confusing to me. Tesla maintains that Christie and his administration had mediated months of dialogue between the electric automaker, the State Motor Vehicle Commission, and powerful auto dealer lobbyists in an attempt to come to a suitable resolution. Christie said, I have no problem with Tesla signing directly to customer, except it's against the law in New Jersey. If Tesla wants to, they can go to the 120 members of the state legislature and change the law. I'm just going to leave that quote there for a second, because that's how making law should work, right? You just wait for a company to go and talk to all the lawmakers? Okay, yes, I admit, I am a little biased here, but this all just seems really weird to me. It has been shown by both Tesla Model S owners and Tesla Motors itself that with the help of their supercharged network, driving coast to coast in an EV is totally doable. But what about all of us who drive other EVs? Well, Go E3, capital G and E, an Arizona-based company, plans to help with that. They have set themselves the ambitious goal of electrifying routes across the US from coast to coast, using high-powered DC quick charging stations. They claim that they will roll out triple-headed charging stations across the US over the coming four years. By then, it says, there will be enough rapid charging stations along several major US routes that EV drivers in everything from a Nissan Leaf to a Chevrolet Spark will be able to join Tesla Model S drivers in being able to cross the US without burning a drop of gas. Each of their stations, they say, will support Chadamo, CCS, and Tesla supercharging. GoE3 claims it will fund the installation of the 1,250 charging points itself and then charge customers a fee of around $6 for 100 miles worth of range. But will this model work when Tesla is giving away the power? And finally, in the UK and many other parts of the world, it's the law that a vehicle has to have be checked for roadworthiness at regular intervals. In the UK we have our MOT test once a year, although new cars do get a three year pass. That means that the first Nissan Leafs that were sold in this country are coming up for their very first MOT. I know mine is, I have it in less than a week. But what exactly is checked with this test when it comes to an electric car? 
Well, Nikki got her card just before me and thus had her MOT already. She wrote up a brilliant post going through what is checked, and it's definitely worth a read if you live in any country where this kind of test is going to happen. The final test is the easiest, the emissions test. They just stand there and take a deep lung full of clean air. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us for a talk show where we'd be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. I'm Mark Chatterley, and until next time, stay juiced up. However, this isn't the end of rapid charge. Blah, blah. Just read what I wrote last night. It's not difficult. Apparently, it's very difficult.